Welcome to Meaningful Mornings. I'm still in Chicago. <laughs> we completed a lovely Davy retreat yesterday, our ninth in-person retreat. This retreat has been going on for 11 years in a row. For two years, we couldn't meet. Next year's retreat will be in Niagara Falls. And after our Davy retreat, we had our monthly Davy workshop. It's the second Sunday night of the month. This year, we're focusing on rise with the Rishikas. The Davies, the Rishikas in our culture, in our history, how they have risen, how we can rise too. Some of them are too amazing. And so what I try to do is share a single English verb for us to live by so our life can be more like theirs. Yesterday's Rishika that we learned about was Sharada Devi. Her husband is Sri Ramakrishna. They chose each other when they were five years old. Lots of amazing details about her and him. And the single English verb that I shared about her, even though every positive verb <laughs> relates to her, is acceptance. She was, is an icon of acceptance. And so I was thinking a lot about her yesterday. I still am. What I try to do to help me practice acceptance with myself, with everyone I interact with, especially when I'm annoyed, is to ask myself, whose child is this? If I'm annoyed with my neighbor and I just think of him as my neighbor, my annoyance is going to turn into anger. But if I'm annoyed with my neighbor and I start to reflect, whose child is this? And I come to understand and appreciate that this is the divine mother's child. I have the same mother. Then I start to accept him. Try to use that prompt. Whose child is this? We always do it in the negative. Whose child is this? <laughs> Try to do this in a reflective way. In yesterday's verse, and really the more recent verses, there has been a strong notion of being distracted. What really moved me when I was living in the ashram was when Puja Swami Tejo Mayananda taught us that no one is distracted. What an empowering message. <laughs> he said, we're all disinterested. <laughs> There's the loving hand, but then the guiding hand. Whatever we're disinterested in, we naturally don't focus on. And whatever we're interested in, we focus on. So if you find yourself to be distracted, approach this in a more deep way. It is a disinterest. And specifically, 
one doesn't know the utility of a certain article or being or circumstance. Taking this to the deepest level, why does anything happen to anyone? It is a message from the divine to remember you are divine. When life is easy, that is a message to remember the divine. When life is hard, that is a message from the divine to remember the divine. For you to remember you are a child of the divine. In Srimad Bhagavatam, the finalities are being put together to complete this map. And Rishi Shuka shares the entire purpose of Srimad Bhagavatam is Vasudeva Achintya. Vasudeva Achintya means perpetual remembrance of Sri Krishna. That's it. There's countless subjects that we do get tuned into. But the reason for those subjects is to remember the divine. Trying to bring this to a level of utility more. If you still find that you are distracted today, tomorrow, this week, etc. Three C's. Concentrate. Collaborate. Contemplate. In the short term, if your mind is controlling you, concentrate on what you're doing. Bring your head to your hands. I was sharing with some of our Davies a couple of weeks ago when I ran the Cleveland Half Marathon. I couldn't get my glasses to clear up the fog, so I had to take them off. And they're prescription sunglasses. So really, I was only seeing the few feet around me. So I was super concentrated because I could have fallen into a pothole or crashed into someone. And it made me faster, way faster. Then you know that I love collaborate, which is asking for help. Another word for that is japa. Again, I was sharing with our devis that when our children during the day say, <laughs> Om Namo Narayanaya, I know something bad has come out of their body. They've burped or farted or they have to go to the bathroom, <laughs> something like that. Because I, I sort of had taught them that you should always take God's name. There's no God's name in vain. And finally is to contemplate. To know the distraction belongs to the ego, but you are not the ego. We start contemplation on Saturday. You're going to attend live, yes? <laughs> we continue to verse 17. <clears throat> Atma sambhavita stabdhaha dhana mana madanvitaha yajante nama yagnyeste Dambena vidi purvakam. Joy. This verse is describing anti joy, but we want to feel joy. Atma here is not referring to the spirit, but rather the ego. Sambhavitaha, one is only feeling their ego. In English, this has been shared as conceit. This is who I am. This is what I do. It is all about me. Atma sambhavitaha, or conceit, is when one cages themselves that this is who I am, and this is what I do, but I can't be anything more. One who is conceited feels very little about themselves. They say a lot, but they actually feel very little. It's like the frog in the well syndrome. 
they're in this small area and they feel they're big in that. Being conceited is like being in a cage. I described yesterday about being in a cage, in a net, in an ocean. Stabdaha, one is unmoving. How our families translate this is being stubborn. <laughs> being stubborn. A stubborn person is one who is not utilizing their opportunity. An earlier value that we had explored, and I like this, is daksha. Daksha is doing what only you can do. And I specifically had mentioned in reference to becoming independently joyous. Only a human can do that. But a stubborn person, they're conceited, and this gets expressed as stubbornness. So not only are they in a cage, but they push that cage on everyone else too. This is the way. This is the only way. Conceit and stubbornness. Next, dhana. Tell me what English, in English, what dhana means. <laughs> yes, wealth, resources, money. I don't know if you ever saw the recording where it was one of the last times I saw Puja Swami Tejo Mayananda. And then somehow COVID started, even though I didn't know that at the time, but I couldn't see him for many years. And from our community, we had offered a certain amount of resources for his work. And he looked around at all of the people with me, all of the Yatris, and he said, you're all with him. And though they didn't want to say yes, they had to say yes, because I had their tickets <laughs> and their room keys and stuff. And then he said, it's very expensive to be with him. <laughs> when one lives for dhana, then one is materialistic. We had a workshop just for men yesterday, a deva workshop. And I had asked them, what makes one materialistic? And in a loving way, in a deep way, those devas identified insecurity. When one feels poor inside, they try to be materialistic outside. And that's why what follows dhana is mana and Mada. Mana means ego and mada means arrogance. So when one is poor, they try to fill themselves up with dhana, that is externalities. And with this, there's ego and arrogance. The word anvita means to be full of. So if someone's named Anvita, the notion that it's, it is positive, they're, they're full of values and kindness, but they can be full of themselves too. <laughs> That's what Sri Krishna is sharing here. Next, Yajande, which means they engage in, they perform. But why do they do this? Te, Nama Yagnehi, they do this for their own name. I'm putting this more practically. They are speaking about what they're dedicating, which means they know about what they're sacrificing, which means they are not dedicating. Again, if I go on telling everyone, look at how dedicated I am. Because in my mind, I'm remembering all of the things I'm sacrificing and you're not. In which case, I'm not dedicating and I'm not sacrificing. Lots of subtle lifestyle choices that are shared here. Earlier, I'd mentioned the ideal way to donate is you donate 
to the divine where you feel it came from him. You borrowed it and now you're turning it back to him. Dambena. And in the fourth quarter, these vices started in chapter 16 in verse 4. And the first vice shared was Damba. Damba is hypocrisy, but this is relating to aviddhi purvakam, where one is not following the guidance of a map, not following the script of a scripture. But why Damba is included there is they have a map, but they don't follow it. So they actually don't have a map. It's like when people say, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> so this is map, not map. And trying to give us a practice on how to grow out of such hypocrisy and what this verse is sharing. I'm a hypocritical person. The opposite of this is satya. That is one who is in, integrated. How do I transition from hypocrisy to integrity? The transition step is simplicity. Simplicity. When you have less to think about and less to say and less to do, you're able to manage that in a more meaningful or intentional way. And that becomes the catalyst for integration. From inspiration to application, we are in our final week of chapter 16. I think we've had enough. Too many bruises. We need some healing. Tell us we're good, Sri Krishna. <laughs> Your application from yesterday was to play with leaves. How many of you did this? Cool. There is a new seeker who had asked me, what did you mean by play with leaves? Like, tell me the symbolism of what's being shared. Like, what symbolism? I really wanted you to go play in the leaves. But the specific reason was leaves are an icon of change. The more clear you are about change, the less addicted, attached, and apathetic one is. Tomorrow we'll begin with a story on leaves. Your application for today is to really come up with a plan to go from Damba to Satya. Damba is hypocrisy. Satya is integrity. I shared the middle step is simplicity. You come up with a way you're going to practice this. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Be joy.